Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray, brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. As we talk outdoors every Saturday morning from 6 to 7.30 in Memphis and 6.30 to 8 up in uh, Good Funds in Jackson, Tennessee. And this is a segment that... uh, I didn't know if Ron Wong could pull it off, but I knew if anybody could, it could be Ron. Uh, so we got Ron with us. Good morning, Ron. How's everybody going? Larry, have... it's, a, it's a beautiful Saturday oh, morning. Oh, well, it's, all... you, it's good to be back in Memphis. Yeah, you've been on the road, and you were at the FLW Cup last weekend. And uh, we've got the young man on the line with us right now who – Came out as the champion at Lake Washita over in my home stomping grounds with the cup. And uh, you talk about a fairy tale story. First of all, I, I'm really happy to, to get Clint Davis on the, fo- on the phone with us this morning. Good morning, Clint. Good morning, guys. How are y'all doing this morning? We're doing great. Now, you told me uh, off the air that you, you, you're afraid your phone might blow up because of what's happened between last Saturday and, and last Sunday. So, so I, talk, about, talk about it with us about what it's been like since you, since you walked up on that stage and, and, and collected that big trophy. And Ron Wong made some great pictures that we're, we've got posted on my website of you and your kids. and all, all some, t- Tell us what it's been like. Yeah, it's been. Uh, it's, I mean, it's been amazing. It's, it's really. It's, it's still a dream right now. It's. Just, it's. Uh, man, I, I've. I've been on the phone since 5 a.m. every morning since I walked off that stage, talking with people, just you know, having a blast, talking about fishing and and telling my story. Uh, you know how all this came to be to, to win the Forest Wood Cup. Uh, you know, again, honestly, I, I still can't believe it. <laughs> well, it's been a while, and Ron, you were there. Uh, give us your, your reaction about uh, uh, when they announced that uh, that Clint had won this thing. Well, you know, first of all, Clint was the very first person to weigh in Sunday afternoon. Oh, I didn't know. Well, because cause, he yeah, was he was in tenth place. That's and right. I said, "Wow, what a stringer!" And they showed some clips of him catching these awesome bass there at Washita. And, and I have to tell you, I got butterflies <laughs> in my stomach thinking, yeah. oh my gosh, something phenomenal can happen today. Let's see what happens. And, you know, Larry, like you said, a fairy tale story. First time ever in the history of the Forest Wood Cup that somebody has come from last place to first place on the final day to win it. And, wow. uh, and just be, if I'm not mistaken, Clint, a half an ounce uh, out of not even making the final ten. Is that close or is that right? Or? Uh, that, that's it, half ounce. And, you know, the, the, the crazy part of that story is I had to be in at 440 Saturday, or at 5 o'clock Saturday afternoon. At uh-huh. 440, I had four baths. I, I oh, no. Dish at, like, at like 450, boy, and I threw the, threw the trolling motor down, jumped in the boat, threw my life jacket on, and, headed on off the way in and uh dang if we didn't barely squeak in there well it's just amazing he ended up with uh, uh let's see he got the fi- 15 fish limit 36 pounds 13 ounces uh closed out our our good friend and strike king pro staff member i gotta throw that in there clint uh jim nigemeyer of van texas uh got second but wow let's let's talk about the story here and then we'll let ron kind of uh, go through my, how you caught these fish but Tell our listeners about, because if I'm not mistaken, uh, last uh, fall you sold everything. I mean, you were you were getting out and going back to the power company. Uh, I did, yeah. You know, I'd never been to the power company, but I, that was where, you know, I'd always <laughs> told my buddies, when, if I ever get ready to walk away from this. That's I'm where you not, were going, all right? That's where I'm going. But, um, yeah, I was just burned out, man. My whole life, that's all I've worked at was fishing. And, you know, it had come to a point where I'd done it so much. And, uh-huh. and it wasn't from success or failure or anything. It was just the repetition being going away from my family all the time. And then just, you know, it all mounted up to where I would take, I'd would taken something as pure as bass fishing and turned it into something I hated. Yes. I mean, that, and, uh-huh. that, and that, is, that was how I felt at the time. And, you know, I've heard this story from a lot of guys that do this for a living. And, uh... 
it just, you know, I took a break, and I didn't know if I was going back or not, and I got a call from Bill Taylor. Yeah. Multiple calls from Bill Taylor. Multiple so calls. <laughs> uh-huh. all, all, he, he was just checking. He, he was checking on me. He wasn't, hey, you know, he, just, he was just checking, how's everything, how's the family? And, um, I mean, I know, and, he, you know, he kept kind of wanting to talk about fishing, and he knew I didn't. Yeah, and yeah. Finally, in November, he calls, and he says, buddy, he said, it's now or never. He said, you need a sponsor exemption, and you need to pay your money if you want to go do this. And, uh, you know, luckily, uh, Evan Rude, one of my, my motor sponsor, was gracious enough to give me their sponsor exemption for the tour. And I paid my 8000 I said, well, we'll see how I feel in January. If I'm ready to go, I'm going to go do it. If not, I'm going to get a job. Well, I tell you that. Over the holidays, I just I got to thinking about it, and, and I was getting just more and more fired up. Kind of <laughs> like, like that old hunting dog. You keep him pinned up. and uh, Let you know, him go. The harder he, the harder he hunt, hunts when you let him out. And, you know, it's just it's been a blast all year. Every single day of the season, rain, sleet, snow, we fishing and all. Yeah. I've, I've just been like that little kid again going out there trying to figure out how to catch those little green bass. Well, i tell you what, you, you really did it. And I really like uh, the story about when you were the co-angler for uh, that well-known guy from Bryan, Arkansas, Scott Suggs. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's even part of the story that's even more amazing, the, the, that your last time on Washita was uh with scott who won that thing if i'm not mistaken he won that tournament yeah yeah, yeah. He, and he, did, he finished second in that one he did well he was like uh but you fished with him the first day is that right as a co-angler or something i did i did that was the first flw event i ever fished as a co-angler wow. uh, my, my, good, my good buddies uh justin lucas and cody meyer yes taught me taught me into coming out told me you know you can stay with us come fish co-angler see how you like it and I did. I, I fished with Suggs, uh, Otto Foe, and oh. Chad Skank. Those were my Oh, my gosh. Fish. Okay. You, you, you learned a lot. And so you come to Washington. Uh, Ron knows about this. Fishing's tough. Uh, tell us, uh, and Ron asked him about how he, how he won this thing. And that big 17-pound stringer at the end was it. But tell him, ask him, Ron. Well, Clint, you know, everybody struggled throughout the whole tournament. Yeah. And I don't think there was an angler there in the cup that fished clean all three days. And you certainly didn't fish clean all three <laughs> days. I don't think uh, so. You know, talk a little bit about how did you get your head back in the game, especially on that final day. Yeah. And then what were, what were your main baits that you used? Uh, sure thing. Yeah. It, I fished, you know. It's crazy because I, I fished the cleanest, best tournament I've ever fished in my life at Cumberland this year. Uh-huh. I finished third. And, and after that tournament, you know, I said to myself, I'll never win one after this week. <laughs> if I didn't win this one, I'll never win one. And, oh. and that was my fault. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, yeah, I lost this. Uh, the, the actual, the first morning of the tournament, um, I lost one between four and five pounds. Oh, man. I wanted to say it, it wasn't on my first cast. It was on my second cast. I'd actually shook that fish off in practice. I went straight to it the first morning and lost it. And, uh, you know, and I'm just like, well, the tournament just started. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was shook up. But it, it, it was like, you know, we just started. looks like they're going to bite in this brush today. And, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully it's a good day. Well, four hours later, I'm still looking for my first keeper. Oh, oh. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that's 11, so it's 11 o'clock, around 11.30. I went on a little flurry uh, with the worm uh, uh-huh. and a yoke, the, the, the Mr. Swisher mag buzz worm. Yes. I went on a little flurry with it. And uh, I caught one on the uh, Yozuri 3DB pencil that day and one on a 5-inch hollow belly swim bait. That was my limit. Um, the second day... I had uh, I, I lost three fish over three pounds the second day. It's like, why do I keep losing these bass? Like, oh my you don't goodness! Lose them yeah, on a worm. Yeah, they just weren't biting. They weren't biting good. That was that was the only worm I could get them to bite because I'd thrown ribbon tails and they wouldn't even touch it. It was like the bass didn't exist there. But they're just so hot and salt up and probably been beat on so so long all summer that you know they just they didn't want to bite anything. They done got conditioned to everything. But, yeah, the, wow. the second day, I, I lost those three. Um, again, at 440, I had I had uh, four fish that day, and I jumped down the bottom of the boat, and I tied up my little nickel toadstool. It's a, it's a weedless version of the net head. I actually put uh-huh. an actual 
weed guard on it. Yeah. And I, I flipped it in there. I cut a little Mr. Twister Kamita in half, flipped it in a brush pile, sitting there shaking it, and, and a two-pound largemouth bite. That's it. it. <laughs> and I hauled off the way in. I was like, well, maybe we'll squeak in, and we did. So you go, did you get much sleep Saturday night? Were you uh, uh, ready for Sunday, knowing how, where you were? What was your game plan? Man, we were. I was so exhausted every day. We all were from the heat. And yeah. Being up, <laughs> yep. and yeah. It was. It was not. It was. When I laid down, I was asleep. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about anything but sleep. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Hey, about? Clint. Um, yes, sir. When I was at the expo, I had the opportunity to stop off at the Yozuri booth there and to visit with uh, the guys from Yozuri. And one of the things that they had, they were displaying was a fishing line called Hard Knot Main Line, which is a yeah, fluorocarbon fishing line, which I was super impressed about because of the diameter, how pliable it was, and how strong it was. Tell our listeners, what did you use, you know, as far as fishing line go, and why did you use what you did? Yes, I, I did. I used 100% top knot Yozuri fluorocarbon. Uh, I was actually the test dummy for their fishing line for two years before we ever released it. Oh. And, uh, you know, they, they've made it bulletproof. Let, let me say something about this line. First of all, the diameter, as he said, is really small. I get guys saying, well, I'm, you know, I'm breaking off the six-pound test. Well, if you'll go look at the diameter on it, the six-pound Berkeley or whatever you've been throwing is the is the same size as Yozuri's 10-pound test, so you can actually huh. upsize your line. Um, and the stuff is just it's bulletproof on abrasion, man. It's, it does have a little more memory than most of your four carvings, but I'm perfectly fine with that. On bait casters, it doesn't matter. And, and when I go to spinning rods nowadays, I use, you know, I use Yozuri Super Braid to a small top knot 100% fluorocarbon leader. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's made in Japan, some of the finest fishing line in the world. Well, I tell you what, uh, we've got a couple of minutes here. And, Clint, I know uh, what has this done for you and your career to, to walk off that stage? Not only knowing that you won $300,000, that's pretty cool, you know. I mean, uh, that's a nice feel that's to it. Wife. Yeah, that's, that's a real nice. But uh, how does this feel to, to, to jumpstart your career? Yeah, it, like I said, it, it hasn't all sunk in yet. I, I guess it has. I, I walked into a, 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 a jewelry store yesterday morning. Yesterday, Friday was, uh, or Thursday was my, two days ago, I'm sorry. Yeah, Friday. uh-huh. Thursday, Thursday uh, morning, I walked into a jewelry store to buy my wife a little something nice for her birthday. Good for you. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. That was her birthday uh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, well, go ahead. So tell us what happened. So, yeah, the, the the owner of the jewelry store walks up to me and asked me, he said, are you Clint Davis? I said, yes, sir. And he's like, man, i got to get a picture with you. i oh. got a couple <laughs> budgets that fish, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just been overwhelming by the, the people that have come up to me since I've won. You know, it, every, gas stations everywhere I've stopped, it seems like people come up, you know, wanting to shake your hand and have a picture with you. And it's that's awesome. That's great for my brand, for FLW's brand, and for my sponsor's brand. It's well, that's for sure. And, 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 folks, he's from Montevello, Alabama. He went to school there, went to college there, and things along that line. Clint, uh, we congratulate you. I appreciate Ron Wong so much for being able to hook up with you and get you on Outdoors with Larry Ray. And we want to stay in touch with you, buddy, because uh, it's a life changer, and I think you can handle it. You 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 You're ready to... Turn the corner and go someplace else now. So, uh, good luck, and uh, w- we will talk to you down the road. Same to you, Ron. I'll see you next week, okay? Well, we'll do it. Clint, again, congratulations, and we will see you down the road. That's right. All right, Thank buddy. You, Ron. Thank you for all the great things. Y'all all have a great day. Thank y'all. All right, let's take a break on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Be right back.